you might be wondering why this is happening. Let's work it out. Science Practicals. Uh, I'm Mr. Beardsall and today we're going to be going through electrostatics. Uh, the aim of this lesson are to describe and predict how charged objects interact, to explain how objects can become charged and describe what is meant by an electric field. So as you've just seen, that balloon was stuck to that wall and that was one of the first demonstrations we're going to look at today. But we need to explain why that happened and what I did to make it take place. So if we come over here, you can see I've got my demonstration as a balloon tracked to the wall. So the observations were that so after rubbing the balloon on my hair, I was able to produce an effect where the balloon was attracted to the wall. Now this would suggest that we managed to charge that object, leading it leading to that attraction. And we can describe why that takes place as a result of the exchange of some charges. So this is a term you might have come across before, but uh, we're dealing here with static electricity. And that is the movement of negative charges uh, that we call electrons. So I'm just going to demonstrate how we can do that. So we mentioned how we can move charges or deposit charges leading to an effect where the balloon was attracted to the wall. Well, let's see if we can demonstrate that effect here with uh, a plastic rod and this metal can. So I'm going to charge this rod by rubbing with this cloth and deposit charges onto it. And hopefully, we can lead, lead to an effect where we can have a traction of the can. Now, I'd like to say that was magic, but it was just the deposit of charges. And in this case, we've deposited electrons onto this rod, meaning that we have an imbalance of charges on the can. We've actually moved electrons on the can away from the rod, leaving positive charges nearest to this rod. So we can assume, based on that fact, that the positive charges and the negative charges are actually causing an attraction. And that actually leads me to um, describing what's known as an electric field. So this is one of our aims of today. By charging this rod, I'm producing an electric field around it. And that is where any charged object within that field will experience a force. In the same way that a magnet um, will exert a magnetic field, uh, and any ferrous metal object in that field will experience a force, the same is true here, except we're dealing with positive and negative charges. And just like a North Pole and a North Pole will repel, uh, a positive charge and a positive charge will also repel. But in this case, I've got a situation where I have a negative charge and a positive charge attracting, hence the movement of the can. So the second demonstration we had a look at there was a can with a can rolling on the desk. So the observations were So, next on my list of observations is to see the effect of a charged rod on the stream of water.
as you can see, as I bring the charged rod near the stream of water, it bends towards it. Now this is because water is made up of positive and negative bits. And we're able to push the negative bits away from the stream of water because of the negative charge of the rod, leaving positive charges in the stream itself to attract to the rod as it leaves, hence bending towards the rod. So, So we see the water bending using the rod. Observation was it's bent towards. As it was charged by rubbing it. So that brings us to demonstration number four, which is the Van de Graaff generator. And it's a very interesting device, it's been used for 100 years, and um, it actually generates a really, really high voltage. So we're talking about hundreds of thousands of volts. And you know, that can be witnessed in the depositing of charges on this dome. So if I turn it on, this belt that's spinning is depositing electrons via friction um, onto the dome. So we're actually rubbing electrons off that belt and depositing them on the dome. And if we leave it for long enough, there'll be a lot of electrons, a lot of negative charge stored on that dome. Because remember, only the negative charges can move. All the positive charges within everything we've looked at today will stay still. Um, so right now we're building that negative charge and we can deposit that charge on me. Okay, so that little snap there was literally the noise made as a result of the electrons leaving the dome, uh, <laughs> entering the outside of my body, I guess, um, and being deposited on the ground. So I've effectively earthed it there. And you can continue to do so. Each time you see a little spark, you know, that's great, but you know, how can we use this in terms of a demonstration of charge itself? So, let's see if we can witness those electrons being deposited, whereby we get... Instead of an attractive force that we've seen with the water um, being attracted by the rod or the can being attracted by the rod, let's see if we can witness a repulsive effect. Um, so if I put these little baking tins on the top and get shocked at the same time, um, I should be able to deposit electrons on those because they're touching the dome. Well, if that's the case, you're going to have a lot of electrons next to a lot of electrons. And like I described before, if you have Positives and positives, they repel, just like a North Pole and a North Pole repel. We're going to have a similar situation here where we have electrons and electrons next to each other. And that's also going to cause this repulsion. Let's see if we can observe that effect. There we go. Repelled. So, if we go to our um, demonstration on the sheet, we can say that this was the, the van, it's sometimes it's spelled der, D-E-R, but we're going to call it the van der Graaff. I'm going to remember it's double A, double F, I believe. Van der Graaff generator. Baking tins. So the baking tins were repelled off the Van de Graaff generator.
Okay, so for the final demonstration, we're going to see the effect that we can get from using a charged rod and uh, approach, having it approach some other neutral objects, just like the can was attracted. Let's see if we can produce the same effect with little bits of paper. You can clearly see a lot of the bits of paper were attracted to the rod. Okay, so that was the fifth demonstration, which was uh, bits of paper. You can see those bits of paper were attracted to a charged rod. Okay, so to go into a little bit more detail about some of the process we've seen today with those demonstrations, um, I think we can see straight away from our first demonstration the balloon being attracted to the wall. Um, hopefully you've done this before, but if you haven't, you know, please do. But the reason that the balloon was able to stick to the wall was that we charged it beforehand. So we actually rubbed it either on our head or we rubbed it with a cloth and that enabled charges to be deposited where there was a sufficient difference in charge to cause that attraction. Now in terms of um, our second observation with the can rolling on the desk, the same is absolutely true. I just want to go through you know, what charges are involved and how that takes place. So by rubbing the rod, we're depositing electrons onto this rod. Okay? That means there are more electrons than there are protons. So there's more negative charges than there are positive charges available. By bringing that closer to the can, we can cause that attraction because of the difference in charge and the effect that a negative charge and a, proton and a positive charge will have when they're close together. It causes that attraction. And that's what we've seen in quite a few of the demos there. In terms of the effects that you can observe, We've obviously observed attraction and repulsion. In the same way in magnetism, you can have north poles and north poles repel, north poles and south poles attract. The same is true here with protons and, uh, and electrons, or positive charges and negative charges. Okay, to demonstrate that an uncharged object will not have an effect on a can, a piece of paper, or some tinfoil here, I just want to demonstrate. So we have no attraction. But if I was to charge the balloon and deposit electrons on it, I could hopefully observe an effect where I have some attraction. And you see I'm clearly attracting those bits of tinfoil. There we go. So just to revisit the aims of the lesson, um, we were supposed to describe and predict how charged objects would interact. Um, I cert we certainly predicted a bunch of them, but we definitely described and demonstrated them using our observations today. Um, explain how, char how objects can become charged. We certainly did that using uh, a cluster rubber rod, or rubbing a balloon on my shirt. Certainly that friction is a really important part of how we can charge an object.